Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's lovely to have you all here this afternoon. I hope you're all keeping safe and well in this strange world of ours. Welcome to the first SAM Learning Mat Leaders webinar of the 2021 academic year. My name is Stephanie King, and I hold the role of Commercial Director here at SAM Learning. And I'm joined by my colleague and Regional Director, Craig Pendleman, who time permitting will be taking questions from you all at the end of today's webinar. We do encourage your participation in our webinars. So if you'd like to ask a question, please do use the questions functionality on the right hand side of your screen. So if everybody is sat down, comfortable, and with a cup of tea handy, let's get going, shall we? Was educational leaders, I don't need you to tell, I don't need to tell you how strange of a year 2020 has been to date. Yet here we are all at the end of September, and hopefully by now you're all in a position where you can critically evaluate how well prepared your schools were to readmit students that have had their education disrupted for the better part of six months. The new academic year, even at the best of times, can pose significant challenges to all involved in education. Although in more stable times, we can usually rely on much larger data sets to pre-plan for student comprehension prior to the start of term. And while the education community is banded together to ensure as little disruption to day-to-day -day teaching and learning could continue, we still need to consider now what we could have done better then and what can we do better now, especially considering the impact school closures will have had on the attainment gap for disadvantaged students especially considering the number of local lockdowns that have already been put in place. So as MAT leaders, you are all likely to be highly analytical with the ability to forensically analyse the offerings in your schools and reflect on how well or not well the systems they choose to invest in are working for them. And if something is identified as a weak link, then we need to, regardless of how fondly the staff look at it, remove it, and should there be a better option, hone in on it with laser-like focus and replace it. But first, let's look back at 2020. So far, just to put it into context, on top of Australian bushfires, Indonesian floods, volcanic eruptions in the Philippines, and city-sized locust swarms in East Africa, we have faced as a united planet with one of the biggest health pandemics since the Spanish flu. Six months since we were placed into lockdown with the closure of schools amongst other restrictions to our daily lives, the education community has shown that we can pull together to and with great speed, put contingency plans into place to ensure that the education of our young continues as well as possible. And myself, Craig, and the other directors here at Sam Learning applaud each and every one of you for what you have done so far. During school closures, we saw the rise of virtual classrooms, teaching remotely via Teams, Zoom and Skype. And in the most case, schools were able to continue teaching a solid curriculum of work with no fluff or filler. We saw corporate companies like the BBC calling on their corporate and social responsibilities to provide learning resources to everyone, of which Sam Learning provided content for. But, and this is important, we also witnessed the sheer size of the challenge that faces us as educators when it comes to not only the accessibility of world-class learning materials for students in disadvantaged communities, but we also stand here now looking directly into the metaphorical black hole that is the student attainment gap. Mm. And it is that attainment gap that I want to focus on here today because while I appreciate it is not a physical being, it doesn't change the fact that for anyone involved in education, we can all feel it. We can feel its dark, looming presence towering over us, daring us to step up, to challenge it because it's overconfident. It's been fed and nourished during lockdown. The attainment gap has been growing and it has never posed a more significant threat. Yet we're all revved up here at Sam Learning. We've never been ones to hide away from a challenge. We are genuinely excited to play a part in successfully helping your schools launch their students into successful education, careers and lives. And we have absolutely no doubt in our minds that with the right materials, the right people and the right mindset, 
We can all look adversity in the face and finally say that we will succeed. In June this year, the Education Endowment Fund, the, U, the leading UK body responsible for seeing what works to improve learning outcomes, commissioned a report that showed clear evidence that e-learning had significantly positive outcomes for all students, but particularly those that are considered disadvantaged. To summarise that report, the EEF really powers home the need for schools to audit their current provisions and consider if their offering will generate the level of improvement that could have been achieved should their system have an evidence-informed approach and effective pupil assessment and feedback. The report also makes clear that on top of evidentially informed and effective pupil assessment and feedback, that the providers should also assist an extended school programme and the continued professional development of teachers in the effective use of technology in and out of the classroom. So let's break down those four points and explore them individually. Point one, evidence informed approach. Nelson Mandela once said, may your choices reflect the whole and not your fears. And while the context in which this was said is different, its fundamental meaning rings true when considering your choices when it comes to the systems you choose for your schools to assist in not only narrowing and eventually closing attainment gaps, but also in finding a solution that will continue to have a positive impact on the learning journey for each and every student, regardless of advantage, disadvantage, or ability. There has never been more of a selection for you to choose from when it comes to educational technology. It is carte blanche when it comes to systems, and there is a wonderfully diverse buffet of resources out there that will likely do the job. However, what the EEF is hoping is that for every resource that you choose to buy into, that they have clear evidence behind the pedagogy of that system that shows without a doubt that if used to its fullest, it will have a notable impact on attainment. An example of that would be a report prepared as part of the Education Data Service pilot, who analysed data consisting of almost 300,000 pupils from 250 schools that used SAM learning between the years 2011 and 2018. In that study, it was found that the pupils that spent 10 hours or more using their SAM learning account during year 11, the positive effect was the equivalent of between a nine and a third of a grade per subject. They also found more significant evidence of a positive effect for disadvantaged pupils, defined as those that were eligible for free school meals. Those students that fell under the disadvantaged category who spent the same amount of time on SAM learning during year 11 saw increases of between a fifth and more than a half a grade per subject. These solid and infallible findings are precisely the level of evidence that the EEF would hope for you to take into consideration and it is precisely that level of evidence that makes SAM learning one of the best options for you to consider when looking at closing the attainment gap this year and every year. Point two, effective pupil assessment and feedback. When thinking pupil assessment and feedback, what comes to mind? For some teachers, pupil assessment automatically triggers a shiver of fear down the spine. Knowing that with assessment comes marking, and with marking comes much less time in the day. Some teachers use summative assessment or need to assess comprehension post topic, and some choose a more formative approach with more assessment touch points than their summative colleagues. And let me be clear that there is no right or wrong answer or strategy here, just as there are no one size fits all options when it comes to teaching students with varying ability levels. What we can agree on though, is that regardless of whether your schools choose to assess formatively or summatively, you will only get a true indication of overall student ability if you assess holistically, covering a wide range of subject matter and not just on their ability in maths and English. In STEM learning, we fundamentally believe that every child is good at something. Observing the things that each child loves to do gives you important clues about his or her talents. We need to watch for the things that each child loves to do, appreciate their strengths, 
and tell them about the good you see. Without this, you run the risk of putting a student in an ability group that could come with negative stigmas and subsequently, due to a lack of confidence, set these students off on a lower than necessary flight path through their formative years in education. This is particularly true for this year's New Year 7 intake. We don't have the key stage 2 data available to us to make informed judges on ability level. Instead, we are likely to use tests to find strengths and weaknesses, albeit in a formal way that may not get the most out of students that have spent the better part of six months studying away from school. Instead, why not replace or support those formal tests with a motivational and enjoyable assessment that rewards students and allows them to keep tabs on their own progress while generating large amounts of data for your teachers, not only for maths and English, but for every single subject. And that is exactly what Sam Learning does. Imagine, if you will, that available for you as a multi-academy trust or a school to purchase for a relatively small amount is a system that is proudly cross-curricular key stages three and four with hundreds of thousands of ready-to-use exam board map questions that students actually enjoy using because it rewards them and allows them to compete with friends. Now, imagine that this system will tenderly take teachers by the hand and whisper in their ears, relax, don't worry, I'll do the marking for you, you will put the kettle on. Brilliant, right? So we now have a system that we know covers all of the content we would need to cover from years seven to 10. We can set work that marks itself and students can of course log in independently and take full control over their learning journey, all the while critically self-evaluating their comprehension. How about if that system also had a reporting suite that made the very concept of identifying gaps and knowledge a simple task? and allowed your teaching staff to easily put students in intervention and differentiation groups so that they could set work at different levels to their peers. Well, we are happy to say that Sam Learning has that covered and then some. Point three, professional development in the effective use of technology. Of course, using technology is only ever going to be as effective as the people driving it. And in this case, that means that we cannot only focus on students being digital natives, as it were, to ensure that your edtech options are a success. We need to also ensure that all staff, regardless of aptitude around computers, can not only accurately comprehend the what, how and whys of the systems that you use, but can then be able to effectively prescribe the best route through that technology for each student based on their needs analysis or assessment result. Yet it seems common practice for some companies to traditionally offer one training session for all members of staff at the beginning of a subscription and then simply let teachers fly the nest with the promise that if they ever need training again, it would be available, but at a cost. And we have never believed in that particular methodology of professional development. In fact, quite the opposite. In support of effective CPD, we have an in-house team of ex-school SLT members that now hold the title of school success managers, of which all subscribers will be assigned a dedicated member of the team so that there is one central point of support, training and CPD for your schools throughout the course of your subscription with SAM Learning. In fact, as part of any launch of SAM Learning, we set out a 90 day plan so that each school finds comfort in knowing that we have staff CPD covered and you are in the very best of hands when it comes to increasing the effectiveness of technology. And then that very same success manager will support you and the team throughout the entirety of your subscription with us. And point four, extended school time. Extending school time has been defined as simply increasing time in school so as to improve learning outcomes. To date, research has focused on three main approaches. Extending the length of the school year, extending the length of the school day, and providing additional time for targeted groups of pupils either before 
or after school. The summary focuses on extending core school time and the use of targeted before and after school programmes, particularly to support disadvantaged or low attaining pupils. The importance here with EdTech is on how effective it can be to extend the school day outside of the school grounds with accessibility on computers and mobile devices, allowing for remote learning. The evidence indicates that on average, pupils make two additional months progress per year from extended school time, and in particular, through the targeted use of before and after school programmes. Additionally, there is evidence that disadvantaged pupils benefit more, making close to a three month additional progress. Paradoxically, however, the same reports that suggest that students from disadvantaged backgrounds receive greater benefits from the utilisation of educational technology, they are also less likely to put in the time to do so, which creates a new area for you to consider when asking the question, if left to their own devices, would my students use our purchase systems independently? Amongst many other strategies to assist in successfully extended school time and promoting independent learning, gamification is shown to be amongst the most successful. And the increasing usage of gamification aspects in education is a global trend. Research by the University of Lisbon found that a gamified solution not only saw an increase in engagement, but also saw the grades of participants increase. And the science behind it is fascinating. The research showed that when using game-based elements in learning, chemicals are released such as dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, which together create a cocktail of neurotransmitters that leave learners feeling great and more engaged simply because it is more enjoyable. And this enjoyment leads to higher levels of knowledge retention, increased behaviour, and happier learners. Extending the school day doesn't have to mean extending the hours worked by your teaching staff, and it certainly doesn't mean that you have to work harder. Simply, it means that we can all work smarter to deliver more positive outcomes. So, when looking at your options for EdTech, do keep gamification in mind. Does the system have any game-based functionality such as unique avatars, challenges and rewards? Does it have leaderboards and options for students to compete against each other should they wish to? Keep in mind that the data you will get from a system is only ever going to be as good as the data that goes into it. So find the system that engages your students from the outset and that understands how they want to learn and be rewarded for the work they put in, not just in an increase in attainment, but in a way that provides instant gratification to a generation that demands nothing less. Okay, so I now want to pass the microphone, as it were, to our guest speaker today. And it is my pleasure to introduce you all to Neil Mackay, the Director of Education at Sam Learning, who brings his expertise and experience as not only a head teacher, but a MAP leader to help schools successfully meet and overcome challenges and roadblocks to student access. Today, Neil's going to be talking about how he has utilised awesome educational technology to propel students into the new academic year previously and how he plans to help schools do just that again this year in more challenging times. OK, Neil, so thank you for joining us today. Over to you. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm lucky to have the role of working directly with multi-academy trust leaders teachers, and principals, supporting effective strategic leadership solutions to maximise the impact of technology and drive progress upwards, regardless of learners' starting points. This means regularly working with executive teams, SLTs and middle leaders, understanding the unique context of each multi-academy trust or school and helping to weave into everyday school practice those routines that deliver results. As you are all experiencing this year, it is quite unlike any other. There are so many things to manage and deal with, and then there is the lack of progress for all students due to lockdown and school closures. It is important to remember that it is not only disadvantaged learners that are months behind in their progress, it is everyone. 
but the gap is clearly wider than ever. Of course, many schools are focusing efforts on the new year 11, but they are also focusing quite clearly on the years seven through to 10 to make up the lack of learning time from the past six months. From experience, the challenge of school leadership is ever present, but this year more than most. And from talking to a number of trust leaders, the rate of progress for this year's year 11 needs to exceed that of most years. And with there being wider gaps than previously, the talk has turned to keep up and catch up. It's clear from the recent decade long efficacy study that where students use SAM learning for more than 10 hours, there is a significant positive impact, equivalent of a pH score of plus 0.2 to plus 0.35 for disadvantaged learners. So what are trusts doing? Trusts recognise that systematic organisational changes are hard to embed. And the main core focus this year will be firmly on teaching and learning and accelerating progress. So what solutions are they using? Well, MATS need systems to be able to easily identify the gaps in order to teach, to secure the learning in these gaps and to monitor and test the learning. SAM Learning does all of this seamlessly whilst allowing teaching and learning leads and teachers to focus on feedback, which we know from Sutton Trust um, is the most effective tool for, for impact. SAM Learning allows schools to identify the learning gaps. Activities and tests are set to assess learners' knowledge and skills. This in turn self-marks, gives teachers insight into individual learners' metacognition and automatically gives them clear learning gaps analysis. Trusts are then creating bespoke intervention groups on SAM Learning for targeted groups of learners that require different interventions. With their teachers attached to their groups on SAM Learning, relevant activities are then set to target these gaps in learning. Teachers teach the content, the gap content, they set activities to assess the learning, and this again is automatically marked and used to inform future teaching. The routine is really quite simple. Set the work, assess, monitor the gaps, teach the gaps, set and test again. For some multi-academy trusts and schools uh, that are developing their use of SAM learning even further in pursuit of accelerated progress uh, and embedding evidence-based practice. For, for example, one trust uh, with a focus on securing future recall in preparation for examinations, they're using their SAM learning gaps analysis they are targeting individual and group learning gaps by setting the SAM learning activities to appear in the future. And the aim is to provide learners with the opportunity to recall prior learning throughout the ongoing year. This can also be done centrally and trust-wide. For the learners, as the activities just appear from nowhere, it will make them apply prior knowledge cold, helping them to retain it, securing the movement of knowledge from the short term to the long term memory ready for the examinations. Another bonus of SAM learning is that learners work being automatically marked assessments are sent directly to staff so that they can easily monitor the identified gaps throughout the year, reducing teacher workload and enabling them to employ advanced teaching and learning approaches. And all activity can be monitored centrally and is completely transparent. The overriding strategy is to maintain learners can keep up whilst systematically and effectively targeting the catch up, all in the knowledge of the impact SAM learning has been shown to have on outcomes. And this strategy can be continued remotely, so contingency planning is sorted and local lockdown will not impede success. Thank you, Stephanie. Many thanks for that, Neil. And I'm sure everybody who's on the call today has found your contributions very successful. OK, looking at time, we are rapidly approaching the end of today's webinar. However, we should have a few moments now to look at the question panel. So, Craig, have we had many questions in today? 
Yeah, thank you, Steph. Well, that's a really good question that's coming, actually. So I'll answer as many as I can, but keeping an eye on time, if I don't get a chance to answer your question live on this webinar today, then either Stephanie or myself will be in touch with you directly soon afterwards. So the first question we received was from Hassan, who's asked if we could send copies of the evidence reports that were mentioned earlier in the webinar. Absolutely, Hassan, we'll make all of the impact studies that were created around the usage of SAM learning available for everyone, as we genuinely believe that for the MAT or school leader that's looking to only use systems that are proven to have an impact, evidence is key. And I believe that Stephanie, yep, has just put a copy of those impact reports in the handout section of your control panel. So do feel free to download and read those reports. And if you want to have a further conversation around that data, then we would absolutely welcome it. So next up, we have Juliet. Now, Julia has said, we've been considering buying SAM Learning for all 12 schools in our trust, and I think that this webinar has just made up our mind. We're currently in local lockdown and may need something set up quickly. What are the current turnaround times? Well, firstly, Julia, allow me to be the first to welcome you to the SAM Learning family, and thank you for choosing us to work with you. Uh, thankfully, just prior to the First Nationwide lockdown, we put new systems in place that allow us to get schools up and running with SAM Learning in around the 48 hour mark. We've even arranged for all of our schools to be able to transfer their MIS data to us automatically every night through Group Call Exporter. So the only thing left to do after that is train your staff and we can either do that individually per school or as a collective to further speed up the process. So we could have all of your staff and students online and using SAM Learning before the week is out. And I've just seen that you sent me your contact details, Juliet. Thank you for that. I'll be in touch straight after the webinar. Thank you. Okay, let's look one last question. So Max has said, all of your evidence is around GCSE. Does SAM Learning have anything in place to support Key Stage 3? Max, thank you. It's actually a really great question because looking from the outside in, it does seem that most e-learning systems are specifically designed with GCSE in mind, and that's okay. But even though, yes, recent evidence is GCSE focused, it simply doesn't mean that we don't cover Key Stage 3. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. You see, while a lot of people know SAM Learning as something for GCSE because we cover all subjects and all exam boards, we're also proudly cross Key Stage. And the content we have for Key Stage 3 has just as much content in exactly the same level of quality that you've come to expect from us in 16 different subjects. In fact, I'd probably go as far to say that if we were to survey our schools as to how they use SAM Learning, I'd expect the results to show almost as much, if not exactly the same level of usage at Key Stage 3 than as GCSE. Especially now, if we look at recent usage statistics, with schools forming new baselines uh, using SAM Learning and continuously then assessing their students from Year 7 up to support their own professional judgments and informative interventions throughout each student's learning journey. We also have, as Steph mentioned earlier, the task of closing the social mobility and attainment gap. And for any company, that work simply cannot start at Key Stage 4. It needs to start much, much earlier. So we will, as we have always done, continue to support that by giving schools access to specialist SEND materials and low literacy and numeracy on entry targeted resources to accelerate their access to the curriculum and to help launch all students into successful careers and lives. Okay, definitely looking at time. I think that's all from me now. So back to you, Steph. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. And that, I believe, brings us to the end of our webinar today. But before you leave us, I wanted to bring your attention to the fact that we are happy to provide free of charge online demonstrations of SAM learning should you wish to see how awesome technology can help you this year. So please do get in touch on the email on your screen should you wish to do so. I also want to direct you to the handout section in your control panel. I've already put in there copies of the reports that we've discussed today should you wish to save those. Otherwise, from both Craig, myself and Neil, we wish you all the very best and look forward to hearing from and hopefully one day soon seeing you. Thank you and bye for now.